Hello and welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. This is part five of a video series how to build a web page using Tailwind CSS and AlpineJS. So in the previous video, we finished coding the static portion of the page and it's finally time to add some interactivity to the page using AlpineJS. So with AlpineJS, we can add interactivity directly to the HTML element without the need to write any custom JavaScript code. Let me show you how it works. A place where we need interactivity is the drop-down menu. As you can see here, when I click on the profile, it appears and disappears. And it also has a sliding effect. We can achieve this with Alpine.js. But first, let's add the HTML markup to our link. Let's go back to the code. Go to the profile section here. And let's add some markup straight under the A. So it's a diff element with a UL and uh, list items. So, so they will be just placed on the page right now. Let's style it. So for the diff, Let's add some classes. First class is absolute. So it's positioned independent from the page. Write zero. So we tell the element align to the very right with the background color of white. Text black with a shadow, a drop shadow, rounded large, rounded corners, width 40, padding 2, and set index of 20. Quick look, there we go. Now it's positioned absolute um, relative to the whole page, but we would like it to position relative to our profile link here. So we have to add the class relative to our list element. So relative. Now it moved a little bit to the left uh, aligned with our button. Next we will add some classes to the UL. So first a hover list, like we used um, last time. And also, also I would like to align the text to the right. Uh, to achieve that, let's select first the A's. So square brackets, this is the current element. I go one level deeper to the LI and another level deeper to the A. And I say justify end. So it will move to the to the end of the container. Let's have a look. There we go. Now we have the hover list styling and it's aligned to the right. Great, it's time now to add Alpine JS to the page. If you search for Alpine JS to the website, you can read the documentation. It's very, very simple. So we get started here. We grab the script line here, copy and paste, and add it to our head just. Um, below the Tailwind CSS script. There we go. Okay, so let's insert now uh, Alpine.js into the code. Let's go to our drop-down menu here. Yeah, to initialize uh, Alpine.js, you write x-data. So wherever you see uh, x-something, that means that this element is talking to the 
Alpine JS. So what we want to do here is to declare a variable. So we do equals uh, curly brackets drop down open. This is the variable and we assign it a value of false. There we go. And now we add this variable to our um, element we would like to show and hide. So this diff here. So we write x dash show equals and now the variable drop down open. What this means is that when the browser comes to this element and uh, it looks up this variable, what, what it should do with this variable. At the moment, this variable is set to false. So it will not show this element. So let's check this one out. Let's go back to our browser here. Refresh the page and the drop down menu is gone. If you refresh the page, there's sometimes a blip is appearing. So to get rid of this blip, we can use a special Alpine uh, JS element, the X dash cloak, cloak element. So uh, what this X cloak does is, uh, so the blip appears because the Alpine JS is not fully loaded yet on the page. So the element is visible for a millisecond before the JavaScript kicks in. So to avoid this, we use this element and add a CSS style to it, like display none. So it's not visible when the page loads. And then when Alpine is fully loaded, it deletes this element. So it's pretty neat. Go to our uh, CSS styling here and add at the very top um, this element and display none. And also important, so it's not visible. Let's check it out. And the clip is gone. Great. Next, let's add the, the functionality. So if I click on it, the drop down menu appears and disappears. So let's go to the A tag again. And there we are. And we write at click equals drop down open equals exclamation mark drop down open. So what this means is when I click on it, I want to toggle between false and true. So if the drop down open variable is false at the moment, I would like it to turn it to true. So the exclamation marks basically is the opposite of the Boolean uh, value. Oh, it disappears again because we are refreshing the page. Let's change that. Get rid of the href here. And try again. There we go. Now it stays. Now let's style the, the pointer here. The pointer is not a nice link anymore. And also I can select the text. Let's change this. So we add a class. Set class here. Class cursor. pointer and select none so no text is selected now the cursor is a nice uh, link cursor and I can't select the text nice next I would like if I click outside the box here I would like the drop down to disappear we can achieve that by writing at click dot away equals drop down open equals false. 
Let's test it. Click outside and it disappears. Nice. Okay, now the functionality is here. What I would like to do now is to create this smooth sliding down effect with a bit of scaling as well. Back to the code. So let's add it here. So this is the markup. So it's a x dash transition colon enter. So the enter means when the animation starts, um, the entering the animation. So we say a duration of 300 and ease out the styling. So at the start, this element should have an opacity of zero. So we apply some classes here. Translate y5, that means the position of this element should be uh, 20, so 5 corresponds to 20 pixels, and because a minus is in front, it should be 20 pixels above the element. And the scale is 90%, so it's a bit, a bit smaller. And the last line would be x dash transition colon end hyphen end. So at the end, it should have opacity of 100, 100%, translate to zero, so it's in place, and the scale of 100. So let's check it out, refresh the page, and there we go. Nice smooth sliding now. Now the only pit, um, missing now is the rotation of this little arrow here. So let's go back to the code. We find this little arrow image is this one here. And we add a X hyphen bind a colon class. What this means we add we add a class to this element and the condition is drop down open question mark. So is the drop down open, is this true? If this is true, we add, we add a class, the class is rotate 180. So if the drop down open is true, rotate 180. And we also give it a duration, duration of 300. And then a colon, that means, and if not, what do we do if it's not? We do nothing. It's just an empty string. Let's check it out. And it turns around, as you see. Okay, this was the last element we add to our drop down uh, link here. Next up, we look into making the site responsive and mobile version. And here we also use a little bit of Alpine GS. See you then.